The BCN Liberation Triangle, Black Christian Nationalism, seeks to change society in order to accomplish the liberation of black people and realizes that we as a people are engaged in a struggle for power and for our survival. We utilize the BCN Liberation Triangle as a godly symbol to Kasaniwatu and bring black people together to create oneness and unity amongst our people, to build a nation within a nation where we control our own institutions that governs our lives. The Liberation Triangle is a symbol of Cody, where we voluntarily tax ourselves to fund the black nation and is the financial basis of building a nation. The Liberation Triangle is also a symbol of Kazi, which is communal work and responsibility, where we collectively work together on a common program that's designed to liberate the African diaspora from the oppression exploitation and brutality of our colonial oppressors through Kasanya Watu, Kodi, and Kazi. We will once again build the kingdom of heaven on earth for our people throughout the African diaspora. As black Christian nationalists all over the world, we pledge to let the power of the liberation triangle work its wonders in us to take the power of the Liberation Triangle to African people across the world. May God and the Black Nation be our witness that we exist to take Black Christian nationalism to Black people everywhere. Today we're dealing with uh, the book of Micah, mm -hmm. uh, and his uh, the topic is the prophet of social justice. Mm -hmm. uh, Michael uh, Micah is an abbreviated form of Micah, mm -hmm. meaning who is like Yahweh. Mm -hmm. Micah, one of the twelve prophets, one of the twelve minor prophets, is is the last of the four last of the four prophets of the eighth century. Mm -hmm. That would be Amos who prophesied in the north. You had Hosea, who prophesied in the north. And then you had Isaiah. We said Isaiah is broken down into several sections or several uh, potentially authors. So first Isaiah in the south and Micah in the south. So some of the prophets were in the north and some in the south. Mm -hmm. you know, we have the divided kingdom of the black nation Israel. Well. The book of Michael clearly uh, dates during the last half of the 8th century. The kings mentioned in the books give us the times and the social economic conditions of Micah's prophecy. Mm -hmm. Micah is known as the prophet of social justice. He championed the cause of the oppressed mm -hmm. and the underprivileged. Well. Uh, the prophecy of Micah extended during the reign of three southern kings. Mm -hmm. yeah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah. Mm -hmm. A lot of you might be familiar with Hezekiah. He was one of the good kings. Mm -hmm. Brought right. back some of the uh, nationalism and the covenant uh, practices that, that the black nation has had a hard time keeping. Uh, Jothan and, and, and Ahaz, not so. Uh -huh. And uh, we're going to try to deal with that a little bit briefly. <clears throat> During the second half of the 8th century, the black nation Israel ceased to function as a nation. So we had a, a, a monarchy <coughs> period when they, came, they were all one nation, they divided, and they came into two nations, so you can see some of that on the, some of the charts. You had the Israel and Judah in the south. But they ceased to function as a nation. They ceased to relate to each other as uh, righteous brothers and sisters under the covenant. They ceased to, to uh, uh, be considerate of one another's values and love and concern, and they seemed to diminish and denigrate down to 
uh, their individualistic uh, tendencies. Well, and we, we say that's a big problem for the black nation Israel Amen. because they got consumed with their individualism. That's right. Amen. So what were the conditions of the black nation Israel during the reign of the kings? During Jotham's reign in Judah, the south, Assyria was starting to take control of the region. Peacock, the king of Israel, and Rizin, the king of Damascus, attempted to resist against Assyria. They tried to uh, get Jotham, which was the king in the south, to join this pact. But Jotham was uh, getting old at age, and he eventually died during that period. So all this was going, this, this Syrian aggression and, 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 and the pact that uh, the north and Damascus was trying to put together fell on the doorsteps of Ahaz. Now, Ahaz was the son of Jotham. He, he was left to deal with this Assyrian aggression. All right. The coalition of Israel and Damascus uh, he invaded Judah to get rid of Ahaz and install a king more willing to resist Assyria. Right. During this instability, the Edomites, uh, we talked about a little bit last several couple of weeks, who had been under Judah's control, regained their independence and became a separate group again. So you have territories and factions, you know, breaking away from each other because all that was under the control of the, of the southern kingdom. The coalition effort uh, to get Judah on board failed because King Ahaz, the king of Judah, felt threatened and reached out to the king of Syria to sign a pact with the enemy. Well. The very people who were attempting to destroy his extended family, his brothers in the north, so you have your brothers in the north trying to fight off oppression from the Syrians coming down, migrating down from the north, trying to take control. And you have your, your, your extended family, your brother in the south, that don't want to be involved in the, in the pact. Well, yeah. As a matter of fact, he wants to make an alliance with the enemy well, yeah. to, 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 for his own personal desires, for his own personal control. Well, yeah. Which is a, a, a serious problem, you know. And, you know when you try to deal, look at your enemy as being somebody you can uh, side with. Well, uh, the, the prophet Isaiah warned Ahaz not to engage in such desired consequences, but to trust in God. So don't don't trust in Assyria. Trust in God. Trust in Yahweh. Yeah. Re recommit yourself to the covenant. Recommit yourself to your brothers and sisters, to the law, and we can fight off this foreign oppression. Man, well, man. But, uh, you know, Ahaz, yeah. he, he, he didn't see it that way. Man, <laughs> that was a serious yeah. problem. So, you, know, so, you know, what does this all have to do with uh, Micah? Mm -hmm. Judah under Ahaz escaped destruction, but, but not as a free nation. Mm -hmm. The pact with the king Ahaz and Assyria uh, signed away Judah's freedom. Mm -hmm. This is akin to you know, white people wanting to, we black people trying to integrate with black people. That's right. Mm -hmm. we, they, you know, white people may start off you know, maybe not calling you a nigga in your face, but at some <laughs> point, you know, they gonna, when they gain control, they're going to mm -hmm. flip the switch and what? they're not going to want to be, they want total control mm -hmm. and they're going to try to force you out. Well. So this is what's going on. Not that the Syrians were per se white people, but but this is what he was trying to do. Mm -hmm. You know, he signed away his allegiance. He signed away the freedom. Well. So now you 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 got all Syria wants some some allegiance. They want some tribute and things of that nature. So we have a quote from uh, from the book of the, the the people of the ancient Israel. It says. As one decade followed another, the contrast between rich and poor became even more pronounced than Israel. Well. In the ninth century, the social abuses and sharp economic distinctions of an increasingly stratified society had been of little concern to the monarchy. And by the middle of the eighth century, such problems were met with complete indifference. Mm -hmm. Even so, the eighth century produced an age of classical Israelite prophetism during which Amos, Hosea, Hosea, Micah, and Isaiah voiced their sharp protests. Mm -hmm. Their fervent invitation to return to Yahweh invoked little positive response, however. Well. And the dismal situation did not improve during the last century of Judah's existence, when the nation was often required to function as a obliging 
obliging Assyrian vessel. All so right. this is what happened when, 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 when Ahaz signed this pact with Assyria, they, they, he, he's got allegiance to them. You know, he, he, he knows that he might think he's committed to Israel and uh, Judah in the south, but he, he, he's a, he, Israel has him, I mean, Assyria has him in his back pocket now. That's right. And he's, he's totally sold off. That's right. He's totally bought off. You know, it's it's a weird kind of thing. I, you know, that's why we studied about it. We try we try to understand, gain knowledge and insight on what happened to the black nation, nation of Israel and apply that to our existence today. That's right. The black nation of Israel had had a breakdown in society. Individualism mm -hmm. on the rise and the people only concerned about themselves. Michael with Michael witnessed the destruction of the northern kingdom because you know Syria was already taking control, they were trying to uh, exploit the north, so he, he witnessed that during his reign, and he saw these same social abuses that took place in the southern kingdom, and this is what he started prophesying about. Well. So, uh, I know everybody brought their Bibles. And, oh, uh, yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, because we're a Bible-reading church. <laughs> and uh, some people even have the Bible on their phone nowadays. You know? Amen. I need somebody to read that uh, scripture from Micah. Uh, it's uh, Michael 3, 9 through 11. Michael what? Three. Michael 3, chapter 3, verse 9 through 11. Okay. Now listen to this. You princes of the house of Jacob, ruler of the house of Israel, you who loathe justice and pervert all that is right, you who feel Zion to blood, Jerusalem with crime, her princesses pronouncing their verdict of the bride. Her priest takes a fee for their ruling. Her prophets make divinations for money. And yet they they rely on Yahweh, they say. So, oh, nice. okay. That's, that's good. Thank you. Um, so this is this is some of the social justice going on. It, it, he's saying that the, uh, the, the blood built Zion, which is the north, mm -hmm. and crime built the, the Judah in the south. So he's processing about this is going on. These are the social abuses. And then he's talking about the, the ruling class and the, the judges who, who are supposed to make decisions. You know, they only make the decisions based on the bride. You know, the, the prophets, I guess preachers and stuff like that, they only preach it for money. Well, you know, that sounds familiar. Uh, you know, uh, you know, but this is what's going on. You know, you're supposed to be out serving God, but everybody's only concerned about their individual economic gain. That's right. You know, you can't maintain a nation if everybody's concerned about their individual economic gain. That's right. Only the gain that we have to be concerned about the gain of the group, the gain of the nation, Amen. and hence our economic gain. Will be Amen. will be fulfilled as well. Right. Ahaz had had to acknowledge he, he Ahaz had to acknowledge the Assyrian gods and pay homage. We might get into that a little bit later. The Assyrian gods and all that. Well, I mean next week. Ahaz attempted to blend the religious practices of Judah and Assyria. He's trying to merge well. the Assyrian practice with the covenant practice of, of Israel. Well. And you, you, you know how that's like trying to mix oil and water. Right? <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 it may not mix. <laughs> Ahaz made an altar that was a replica of the Assyrian king altar. Ahaz placed the new altar that he built, he put it in the temple and took the existing altar that they had and mm -hmm. set it aside over to in another room. Well, watch this out now. This is what Ahaz did. You know, but now, now people come to the temple, y'all might call it church today, they come to the temple, now you got all these Assyrian props and you know, well. you got these Assyrian gods and this, that, and other. People are like, what's going on? <laughs> you know, but he but you know, he he has Given in to this total uh, uh, adoption of a, of a foreign uh, religion. Well, this this is somewhat like trying to merge BCN and uh, well. what Kimba called BS. You know, <laughs> <laughs> one, one created, you know, one is created by the prophet of the black nation, and the other is created by some white guy. That's right. But we 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 gonna we gonna we gonna stay with the teachers of the black society. All right. <laughs> Our props stay right. That's the kind of props you want. You want to prop with the black Christian nationalism and you want to prop with the black Messiah. Well, that's, that's, that's the right. word. Right. Right. We're talking about blending 
thing. Amen. Now that's a perfect blend. That's One right. complements the other. They well. don't conflict with each other. It's a perfect match. There you go. Right. Match right. making heaven. That's right. And y'all don't want to leave, y'all need to see Sister Chio. <laughs> <laughs> You know, this is uh, that, that, see on a serious note, you know, Advent season is coming up, people gonna be running around buying. Don't give all your money to the white man. Right. Go buy some some stuff and make get some some prop get some stuff for the house that let well. everybody know that when they come in your house, this is a house that's serving the Lord. Well. So a lot of people get, get messed up and uh with some of the teachers of uh, <laughs> BCN, you know. Yes, so in, in Micah 2 6, it says, Do not preach. Thus they preach. One should not preach such things. Disgrace will overtake us. Mm -hmm. Well, they say, you know, they don't like BC. They say BCN is too critical. But we're, we're simply stating the facts on what we see. We're simply calling what we see in the Bible. You know, if we are to end our oppression, well, we can't behave like the oppressor. That's right. We can't use his system well, and think we're gonna turn around and, and, and use that system to end our oppression. That's, that's right. right. It ain't gonna work. This capitalism, which is only concerned about you know personal gain. Right. That's right. You know, we can't run around uh, as black people thinking things are, are gonna be all right well, and that we don't have to change. We have to be involved in change. The teachers of Jeremiah Baby Ajman, if he talked, if he prophesied about one thing, it was about change. That's right. right. That's Who right. we are, that's right. where we are, and how we are is not good enough. Well, that's right. We have to be about change. We have to be about trying to, to, to merge our energies and become a better people. That's right. And that can only happen through the group. Right. And that's why we talk about individualism a lot. That's right. Individualism. Is, 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 is he not going to allow you to become a people? That's right. You know, you, if you're going to be individualistic, you can't be a people that's being right. individualistic. Yeah, that's right. Every, you can't be a nation. That's what happened to the black nation of Israel. They divided. That's now right. you got the northern kingdom destroyed, and now Syria is moving forward, and they're coming down for the south. That's, that's right. right. So, that, you know, you, you, they, they have to be aware of that, but Ahaz, he wasn't thinking, oh, he's concerned about his personal rank. Well. He wants to stay in power. Mm -hmm. That's all he concerned. Just being in power. It's kind of like um, the scenery. <laughs> 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 the scenery will stay in power. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. How you must be reading my mind. It's <laughs> crazy because you know during the, the last mayor mayor election, which we have a runoff, you know. You, it's like the, uh, you have most of the people that voted don't want either one of these candidates. <laughs> Over 50% of the people said we don't want Norwood, we don't want uh, Keisha. 50% of the people did not vote for both of them. Now we we stuck with the two, and I guess we got to go in the poll and hold our nose <laughs> you know, like we did. That's what we but you know that 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 didn't work out too good. A candidate has to galvanize people, right. well. get them excited about that candidacy. Well. Then they will come out. But if you're not excited, people just they, they have a tendency not to take off work, leave work early, and go vote and all that. You know this. So, but. Uh, you know, we're going to move on with the lesson. <laughs> <laughs> you know. uh, Ahaz uh, allowed pagan practices to flourish. Mm -hmm. uh, foreign fash uh, fashions, you know, all these different clothing. <laughs> yeah, we have to get into that. Uh, cult superstition. Ahaz offered uh, his son as human sacrifice, as a fulfillment to some vow of pledge. And you find that in 2 Kings 16.3. So Ahaz... Uh, 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 practice uh, human sacrifice to, to as some uh, pact, as some pledge, or some vow with the Syrian uh, 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 nation. A lot, a lot of people interpret that scripture. Oh, he was just, you know, it says he walked through fire. Oh, he just there was just some kind of process they had with fire. No, that was human sacrifice. Right. You know that's what he did. He's trying to get show his allegiance. But when you just consume with yourself, you consume with individualism, you're subject to do anything. That's right. And that's what's going on with, with the black community. People would do anything out of their individualism. That's right. Ahaz was known as one of the worst kings of Judah. Uh -huh. Judah lost control of land, territory, which uh, placed them in economic strength. 
He lost agricultural land. He lost control of King's Highway. Mm. If you study about it, you know King Highway was one of the major trade routes. So if you control the trade routes, you get to uh, That's right. you know, uh, siphon off some of the dollars associated with that trade. You know, and uh, copper mines to the Edomite. Controlling land has always, even today, been uh, a basis of bringing money into the nation. We should never divest ourselves of, of property and power and things of that nature. It's not right. gonna, it's not gonna benefit the nation by right. right. losing uh, things like that. That's right. The tribute to Ahaz, uh, the tribute Ahaz paid to Israel to Assyria, which pressed the people to pay more in taxes. Social moral decay that had destroyed Israel now has set in in the south and Judah. Okay. So we, 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 we got a problem, and this is what Micah is trying to deal with. You know, the, the north has been controlled and uh, destroyed, and, and we're just as corrupt as them. Right. You know, we're just as uh, consumed with ourselves. We, 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 we don't love each other. You know, this is going to come to the south if we don't get our act together, if we don't return to Yahweh. Mm -hmm. This is Micah's message. Mm -hmm. so somebody read that... Uh, Quote from Micah, he's dealing with some of the leadership, then he moves on to deal with the people in general. But Micah, the second chapter, one through two. And it may be in your uh, book. It's in the handout. It may be in your handout as well. Woe to those who plot evil, who lie in bed planning mischief. No sooner is it gone than they do it, the hand have the strength for it. Season the fields that they, that they covet. They take over houses as well. Owner and house, they confiscate together, taking both man and inheritance. Mm -hmm. So in this part, they was talking about they confiscating people's houses. You know, I guess you you know borrow money. You know, like that. Just, that's the beginning of the foreclosure process. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, borrow money, you pay, pay it back. You know, so they come and they want your house and and, and, and everything else and throw you out and even you. They said they even go further to, to get your inheritance. Yeah. But this is this is what they had oh, boiled down to. Laying in bed, sleeping at night, waking up in the morning, and plotting evil against their brothers and sisters. Wow. You know, this is the community that was going on in Judah. And then you also have in um, in uh, Micah uh, second chapter uh, eight through ten it says it is you who play the enemy to my people. Well. From the innocent man, you snatch his cloak. Oh, Lord. On the man who thinks himself safe, you inflict the damage of war. Well. The woman of my people, you drive, the women of my people, you drive out from the houses they love. Their children, you rob for, for you rob forever of the honor they gave. And then it says, get up, be off. There is no resting place here for you, for worthless things you exact an exorbitant pledge. So they saying that people have borrowed money and things of that nation, they pledge maybe, and you 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 making them pay all this money for worthless things. Well. But this is what happened when people, you know, gauge in this capitalism and, and this 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 raw naked capitalism that, that's not concerned about anybody. That's right. Now somebody read the uh, next one for me. Uh, that's be Micah. Third chapter, one through three. And it should be in your handout as well. Now listen to this, you princes of the house of Jacob, rulers of the house of Israel. You are not the ones who should know that, who should know what is right. You, enemies of good and friends of evil, when they have devoured the flesh of my people and torn off their skin. Well. They may crush their bones when they have shredded them like flesh in a pot and like meat in a cauldron. Well. And, uh, so now we, you know, uh, Micah is describing almost like cannibalism. You know, he's saying that the people of Israel, the southern kingdom in particular, has now, he's describing as like a butcher. A butcher in the meat beef market. Well. Carving up meat, just, just slicing and dicing. Breaking bones and you know, just with little regard for the carcass. So this is this is the condition that the black nation Israel had uh, reduced themselves to. And that it's a, it's a real problem if, if you're gonna try to 
stave off oppression from your enemy, you have to be together. You can't be carving up each other. <laughs> well, <and> nobody. <laughs> right. That's right. Because, because you know, right. when the enemy gets to your door, your neighbor's going to turn his head. Right. You know, we, right. we, have to, we have to be united. So That's when we see that the enemy come down the street, we stop them on the, at the first street. Well, yeah, but we, we never we seem to know, learn that, you know, well. that the enemy come on in. So we have a quote there from the interpreter's uh, commentary. Somebody help me out with that one. Read that one as well. That the trails of the helpless creature, torn limb from limb, draws on language reminiscent of the atrocities known to have been perpetuated by the Assyrians on their conquered enemies, as in Micah 2 and 8, suggests again that the destroyer from without is scarcely distinguishable from the destroyer within. Well. So in your, in your handout, that we always put in your handout, and sometimes we put other things, you have the BCN teachers. The BCN teachers are part of the belief system inherent in the Pan-African Orthodox Christian yeah, Church. That's right. They serve as a guide in our religious instructions, providing us with the framework and understanding of what we must do to act purposely in the world as the people of God. Well. Now, BCN teaches number four says, individualism is the beast in each of us. That's right. We must fight the beast within as well as the beast without. So we have, a, we have, we have enemies, most of the time they're white, they, 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 we have to fight them. They, they're the beasts, you know. But we also have our enemies within ourselves. Well, we have to keep ourselves from acting like our oppressor, well, turning on one another, well, alienating one another, destroying the very things that it takes us to build. You know, you, it takes years to build up a nation. That's right. The master teacher had to spend years building up what we have today. And it only takes one rain to take it down. Well, it, it'll just start chopping down overnight. Well, so we have to fight the beast within mm -hmm. our individualism, the, the, the desire to only be consumed with yourself, well, the desire for personal gain, the desire to be just consumed with what you want, when you want, and, and not what the nation needs. So we have to constantly be aware of that. We fight the enemy within as well as the enemy without. That's right. They're both enemies. We have, they both have to be equally fought. Right. We can't just say the white man is, is, is the devil and he ain't right. We got to fight him. We have our own internal demons we have to deal with. That's we right. Have, we have our own community where people are just consumed with individualism. We have to deal with the beast within well, as well as the beast without. Right. That means the beast in the nation and the beast outside the nation. Well. We can't we can't we can't make light of that. It's a serious issue. Now we, last week we brought up the I think Shane got brought up some stuff and we had a good conversation. He was talking about individualism and you know what what is this and well. what is the somebody came up to me and asked me what was the will of God and all this, that and the other. So you know, we said individualism is self-centered, egocentristic, egocentristic, and selfish human behavior. It is the lowest nature of man and judge as a sin, for it negates innate human value. Well. Now, if you took black Christian nationalism and you, you know, we have digital versions of it, so you can search it. You want to buy it and read it. Get read it. If you search it and you search the word individualism, on page 67 it says, the black, black Christian nationalists, we seek to free ourselves from individualism in order to, that we may become a people. Right. Well, we have to free ourselves from it. We cannot, and it, you know, it might sound like a broke record. We cannot be a nation if we're going to be individualistic. That's right. We cannot merge Amen. our energies. Amen. We can't even support black businesses. We can't support black causes. We can't do it. That's why it's very difficult for these businesses and causes to uh, excel because of individualism. We, we, we won't support them. Well. And also, if you do another search and you come up on page 69, it says, for us, individualism is the unpardonable sin. Because it separates man from his brother and sister who constitute his only channel and communication to God. Well, so we, we, this is serious. 
you know, we yeah. said individualism is 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 the unpardonable sin. We have to stamp it out wherever we see it. That's or right. Or at least try to stamp it out. Because it's 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 the unpardonable sin. We can't the God experience can't come in the nation with this individualism. We have to merge it. Anybody that's a group leader will tell you that. Well, you know, that they, 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 they got a bunch of individualistic people in their group. Well, They're about to pull the hair out. That's right. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, so this, this is serious. I don't want to make light of this individualism. This is real. We, this is the what our purpose is. If you read Black Christian Nationalism, and, and uh, Black Messiah and Jeremiah Bay Bay Osman always talk, or if you ever had the pleasure of being in a meeting with him, he's always talking about individualism. He's always talking about what we need to do to be a better people. That's because right. Because if we don't change, if we don't use the group process to make us better, to come who we already are, there's no liberation for us. That's right. Jeremiah Bay say Osman said that we cannot be liberated the way we are. That's you right. Know, and and right. That, that should be kind of evident. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do it. So yeah. we, we have to uh, deal with that, and I just wanted to open up the little time we have left. I mean, what 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 do, do y'all agree with that? Do you think individualism is a problem? I mean. You know, we struggle with that. Yes, Brother Shingai. Yeah, with the, and, and this, this is for the, the newer members that's here. The, the, the criticism that the, most of the time we can't see our own individualism. Like sometimes we'll, we'll be just doing things and think this, this is okay and, and what I'm doing, but it has, but it's, it's, it's basically has something to do with self rather than for the group. So the group basically mirrors back to you the things that we see. And in this process, it's, it's a tough process because it's a, it's a form of conflict resolutions, right? Like you, there's conflict involved in the group process. And it does hurt for somebody to criticize you, but it's not meant to tear you up or, or to break you down or to make you feel less than. It is to point out these character defects that we possibly have that we might not be aware of. Sometimes we might be aware of and don't even care. And then we can go through love from that. And it's, it's a it's a process that we stop, and it, it takes time to develop this. That's just my comment. Oh, yeah. Amen. I just want to come in, you know, um, you know, we were saying Jerry Mojo, baby, for the new members also. Um, he played with Albert Cleet Jr. for those new members who didn't know that. Oh, yeah. Thank yeah, you go try to find this book on Jerry Mojo, baby, for Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. uh, I know uh, in terms of individualism, it's it's not an easy process, and it's something that you fight every day. It ain't like you can go to the group and the group dissolve you, you tell you this, and you're going to change right then. It's an ongoing process. Mm -hmm. It's nothing that you say, well, I'm not in a business, and we care that what is each and every day. So oh, it's yeah. a fight within and it's without. Right. I mean, and then last night, I just want to say, we start saying we instead of I. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. the change does come. Um, yes, brother. Yeah, well, like, like everybody's saying, if this is true, but that's how we are where we are today because of what the oppressors saw when he came, that we were all united as a team, even though we had internal conflicts, you know, with different tribes. But the fact is that we still were a family, and they saw that as our strength. Right. And they realized that for them to get us to where we are today, they had to destroy that, and that's how... They were able to take us and shackle us and send us right. off to different plantations. Right. So they knew right. that was our strength from day one. So mm -hmm. that's where we have to get back to. And it's not easy because of 400 years of conditioning, thinking me, 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 and I, I, I. Right. It's hard to say we. Right. But in most, like I'm from the West Indies, and in my neighborhood, it was everybody for everybody. Mm -hmm. You know, I couldn't walk on the street and I say hello to my to, to a neighbor. I wouldn't get my behind whip when I got home because right. mm -hmm. he would have told my father, your son passed and didn't acknowledge me. So right. that's a positive right. you know, that group now. effort that we need to get back to, which is not easy, but it can be done. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sure. Well, see, that's, um, you know, I'm looking at, at, at all the, the nations, I mean, the 12 tribes of Israel. See, that, that shows the division that they had come to and they refused not to go back together because to, to me it seemed like that whoever came in there, they could have beat if they were a cohesive group. And see, they forget that, that they don't recognize how bad things came to, to its 
another group has gained control. Right. 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 You never you never think about right. you know, the, the, the result of being in right. the right. right. And it, a lot of times so it's too late. Right. Thank so you. like Shanghai Cola was talking about, you know, the, the, the group process, trying to stamp out it it is it, 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 it is difficult at times and uh, the master teacher uh, explains it like uh, getting off drugs. You know, and that's how difficult it is. And you can think about it, if you think back as a child, when we, when we were all babies, you had to be individualistic because you, you had to be consumed with yourself because you, you couldn't cook your breakfast, you know, you couldn't cook dinner, you, you couldn't get that load off you if it needed to be changed. You, know? you, you needed somebody to act, you needed somebody to do something for you. And you're gonna cry, you're gonna do whatever it takes to, to get some attention. So but but as we get older, well, we're supposed to move away well, from those individualistic tendencies and start functioning more as a communal group, as a, as a, as a communal people and consumed with concern about our brothers and sisters. That's right. And the black nation of Israel struggled with that, particularly with all the foreign uh, influences. Yes, brother. I think one of the, the difficulties is that in today's society, everything that we are surrounded by promotes and supports individualism, yes. uh, which makes it even more difficult for us to overcome individualism. But it would be amazing if, if there was a way that we could convert that individualism into communalism, and which, which I guess what I'm saying is take advantage of being individualistic and has, have a way of uh, diverting it into the support of the group. Right, yeah. Well, I mean, like you say, you know, we have to uh, live in the white man's society. His society is based on individualism. Everything about it is based on individualism, you know, and, uh, and selfishness and concern with yourself. Like, I think Brother Ken mentioned about the communities. I mean, you have communities now where, you know, you don't even know your neighbor. The next door neighbor, you might wave at them right. <laughs> or something like that, but you don't know them. Right. They don't know you, and they don't want to know you, and a lot of times you may not want to know them. But it's, it's just a, we, we have a total breakdown in society, and, and that's why problems exist. Yes, brother. You know what? It, that's not, not, not telling who we are, because if you notice it, every time we have a disaster, we come together without even thinking about our differences that we had when okay. everything was normal. So why can't we just forget that and just do it every day anyhow? Yeah. I think maybe why we can't do it like that every day. Because the concept we're missing in the church we have the concept that salvation is a group experience. Yes. Right. And so if you're not experiencing the group over and over again, you're going to always go back to your I look at um, a lot of times 
we may have great ideas of the way we want to do things, and I think my idea is better than yours. Yes. But if it's not for the good of the group, whoever ideas, uh, we have to submerge um, what we may feel at that time. Because I look at the mayor's race. If any one of those black people, I think it's about six or seven running for mayor, if one of them had said, several of them had said, let's support, I know I, I could probably be a good mayor, but right now my state chances don't look that good. Instead of dropping out and it's like, I'm throwing my support behind some, we would not be going through a runoff right now. Right. Right. Nobody wanted to throw it in. Yeah. So, and that's the result. So we stand a chance now. I mean, because white people going, I don't care what going, going on with them, they're going to band together. together. Yeah. Right. But our individualism takes us to a whole nother level. We ain't willing to give up nothing. Mm -hmm. Brother Jay. Um, just, well, hey, I don't know if everybody knows me. My name is Jay. Uh, I've been coming for about a month, maybe a little more. Um, really, it's more of a comment, but um, I just want to say ever since I've been coming, I felt nothing but warmth and the communalism that you all talk about. Like, and I feel like being a young person, like, we want to be involved in that communalism. Like last year, I think it was 2016, you saw 10,000 of us young people marching down, down the streets mm -hmm. for Black Lives Matter. Right. And that's because we want that communalism. We want you know, to be involved, to make a change, to make you know, stuff happen for our communities. Like to actually have communities, not just hoods. Yeah. We don't have neighborhoods no more because there's no, no more neighbors. Right. And all we have is just hoods. So saying that to say, I feel like you all would really be great for us young people to, basically you all have a wheel, right. and the wheel might be a little old, but outdated, you know. <laughs> 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 just a little bit, just a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> just a little bit. <laughs> you know, it's not, it's not a stone square wheel, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and it's got the round edges, but. In all seriousness, I feel like us young people can help improve that wheel to make it Amen. keep rolling yes. into a new All right, well, I, I, I encourage everybody to uh, get Black Christian Nationalism and read Chapter 4. Cardinal Mayo said, there's, you know, salvation is a group experience. As we are aware of that, we're uh, conscious of that then we can move a lot better. We can work with the younger generation better. The younger generation can work with the older generation better. And we can all move as one nation. Amen. So let me close by saying in the Pan-African Orthodox Christian Church, the seeker must regularly undertake meditation, prayer, and religious education to maintain the right spirit. Mm -hmm. Resist the temptation to be ordinary, selfish, and individual, materialistic. So we have to practice Christianity. It's not just some of you, we, we call it pan African Orthodox Christian Church, but this Christianity has to be practiced. Mm -hmm. Communalism has to be practiced. Otherwise, you reduce, we reduce ourselves down to individualism. Amen. 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 Amen.